Hello everyone, my name is Pamela Warren and I'm from Final Harvest. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a song I wrote a long time ago. Well, being married to a pastor was truly a blessing. My husband could split the Word of God with amazing understanding and power. He chose to teach the whole Word, the whole Scripture, not just the things he understood, but also the entire Bible, even passages he had a hard time believing. He knew that God had not changed. He agreed that God is and always will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. A man of God like this is a target for the enemy. My husband was no exception. Though greatly anointed by God as a pastor to teach and deliver the captive from the enemy's grasp, he fell into a trap, cleverly designed by the devil to take him down and out of ministry. I thank God for the years I was influenced by my husband's teaching. I remember that during one of our conversations while our marriage was erupting, he said, you listened, embraced what I taught, and I did not. Prayerfully walking through a series of events led to my divorce of my husband of eight years. Looking for another church to attend after sitting under this type of teaching was not an easy task. I started to attend a mainline denominational church. I tried to stay in the background because of all that I had been going through. I was eventually asked to lead praise and worship with the pastor's wife, Pam. Yep, you guessed it, Pamela Sandberg, member of Final Harvest. Accused of being part of a cult, amongst other things, for believing the whole word of God was rather disheartening. The church felt it necessary to attempt the process of removing my brainwashed thinking. The church was so intent on delivering my soul from the depths of deception that they even flew in an ex-cult member to help. Because of their well-meaning but negative influences, I became confused about my beliefs. Being brought up in a denominational church, I remember thinking way back then, when I was younger, that there must be something more. Something more to Christ to overcome sin, sickness, emotional struggle, and anything else that the enemy might throw my way. While attending a prayer meeting that my future husband had been overseeing, I found the answer. I understood that God and His Holy Word had not changed. His desire was for me to be solely committed to His Word, the cross and the blood that He shed, to cleave wholly to oneness in Christ and Him alone. God and the person of Jesus Christ died in our place for our sin that we committed against Him. Our Creator took our punishment for all the wrong that we had ever done or ever will do. He was the only one that could remove sin that separated us from Him, an absolutely free gift of love and forgiveness. He not only died for our sin, but He also gave us His Holy Spirit, which enables us to live a victorious, abundant life with the enemy under our feet. This is not a life without struggles, but a life of peace, fulfillment, and joy through Him. So why in the world did they call me a cult member. To this day, I have no idea. Because of the struggle with my husband during our separation and the church's desire to reform my belief system, I almost believed that Christ was not the same. His blood had somehow lost or never did have the power that I thought his word said it had. One Sunday after hearing a rather carnal teaching about green M&Ms, I still cannot figure out what that sermon was about. I looked around the room at well-meaning but a rather spiritually arrested congregation. I began to feel a very familiar nudge as I drove home. One by one, the faces of the people came to my mind and I saw their pain and confusion. Their bondage was so great. The enemy had them right where he wanted them. That was it. I knew all Christ had done for me and I was not giving up on the truth. The enemy was not going to put his religious shackles on me. I began to intercede for the church as a whole as my heart broke because of their bondage. They truly took his name in vain and called what is good evil and evil good. I was so moved by the reality I had experienced that I began to write and sing. What surfaced from the depths of my being was the song The Cross. In the days ahead I would be mocked, ridiculed, and called all sorts of names. God did amazing things from that point on. 
As he opened up doors, many people were saved, set free, and filled with his spirit. Pamela Sandberg and Lacey Burdick were a couple of those who embraced the fullness of the cross and his delivering power from religion to a glorious relationship. How can we take his name in vain and count it less powerful now than in the days of the early Christian church? How can we not believe and hold fast to the entire word of God, the same yesterday, today, and forever? God's own blood removes sin's stain, yet we take his name in vain. The cross is more than just a symbol of the church. It is the only way to salvation, eternal life, and becoming totally fulfilled here on this earth. Do you find yourself in a battle you can't win? Are you asking yourself, is there more to the Christian life that God has for me, but I have yet to experience? Maybe you thought you knew him, but he has struck a spiritual nerve. Maybe you have heard about him and the cross, but never really took it to heart and accepted his free gift of salvation. Well, today is the day. Think about the greatest sacrifice that was ever made as you listen to Final Harvest sing the cross. Choose today who you're going to serve. Choose God and all that he is and embrace all that he has done. Or will you choose the enemy? the father of all compromise, doubt, lies, and an ultimately eternal judgment. We love you and pray that your choice will be to hold fast to his word in its entirety, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The cross that we all see
的森林。